And that's what everybody thinks of when they think about blockchain. They think about cryptocurrency or digital currency um, on ramping and off ramping. But there's also this other aspect, um, and it's called data management. And you can use the blockchain as uh, a data management uh, system. So you can put players' habits on the blockchain. You can do solve issues like responsible gaming, uh, provably fair gaming. You can do this all on one blockchain. Hey everybody, welcome to Hashing It Out. This is Becky Legiro, and I am here with Cal of Tal. He's the Chief Commercial Officer. And uh, Cal and I have actually spent some time together this week on uh, several panels at gaming industry events. One was at uh, ESI London, we were talking about NFTs. And the other uh, was here at Betting on Sports Europe, and we were talking about blockchain and its relevance in the sports betting space and what regulators think about it. So really exciting times. Thank you for joining me, Cal. Well, thank you for having awesome me. Awesome to see you. We are we are best friends now. That's right. Uh, a week friend. together. <laughs> <laughs> and I think a, a good way to start this off would be by explaining to our audience um, what Tal has to do with the gambling space, because I know that you work with quite a few industries, so what is it that you do at Tal, and what excites you about uh, this sector in particular? Sure. So Tal is interesting because we are an infrastructure company. So, you know, we are, I like to always say, we're meat and potatoes. We provide API keys, SDKs for a number of application developers. And these are application developers that are building uh, businesses to do with supply chain efficiencies or uh, sustainability on supply chain. So using provenance and traceability, all the neat stuff you can do on blockchain all the way to uh, NFT platforms. And now we're getting a lot of interest from iGaming companies. And what's interesting about the iGaming sector um, is that not only do you get uh, the, the payments use case, uh, and that's what everybody thinks of when they think about blockchain, they think about cryptocurrency or digital currency um, on ramping and off ramping, but there's also this other aspect um, and it's called data management. And you can use the blockchain as uh, a data management uh, system. So you can put players' habits on the blockchain. You can do solve issues like responsible gaming, uh, provably fair gaming, you can do this all on one blockchain. So this is why it's exciting for us and we're going to be uh, taking a, we're going to be doing more and more work, I imagine, in the next little while. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think responsible gambling is a really exciting area for how blockchain technology can help. And I wanted for you to provide some perspective in, on why gambling companies should look to blockchain for storing their data, because I think some people worry that it's going to be expensive putting all these transactions on the blockchain. I know with certain blockchains, it is expensive. Um, but, but why is it preferable to use so the technology that Tal is working on versus some of the more traditional tech when it comes to the storage of data like that? Right. I think there's a, you know, you hit on a number of things here. One is we're a blockchain that enables microtransactions. Okay. So when you have microtransactions, it means we're charging a fractions of a cent to have to to send a transaction. So in the minute you can do that, it opens up a bunch of use cases. And I always like to cite these examples from remittance where you could send $1. Uh, it makes sense. If you had to send that $1 uh, to your cousins and somewhere else in the world on another blockchain, let's say Ethereum, where we have the gas fees that could be $5, it could be up to who knows what, it doesn't make sense anymore. So if you look at it now from a gaming perspective, you start to think, you start to see how that works when it comes to payments to micro betting but also again from a uh when you're starting to think about blockchain based gaming companies and they're putting a lot of this data on chain mm -hmm. the cost of transactions are so low so they can put uh you know provably fair data or gaming data on chain and not all of a sudden realize that geez we can't afford to to do this because the costs are so prohibitively high so it makes very much sense for the gaming aspect um not just uh i gaming but also e gaming groups yeah, absolutely. And, and can you also elaborate a bit on the immutability of the blockchain and, and why this could provide so much value to game, gambling operators who are really trying to store sensitive, sensitive data that a regulator might want to see that might prevent huge fines if the operator is you know, unable to otherwise show this data? Why is this immutable ledger so, so valuable to the gambling space? Right. So these days, you have a lot of these gambling operators that are putting, they're following the proper procedures in terms of responsible gaming, and they're making sure that they have their data for their players and their markers are harmed, they're tracking that, and they're following the 
proper procedures so that if there is a problem gamer out there, they can show the regulators that they have uh, done corrective action um, and they can prove it. And the problem though is when this is stored in a database or an internal database, um, anything can happen. The database uh, could get hacked or the business could, or the gaming company could go out of business. Uh, there's a number of things that could happen. But imagine now you can take this data or a hash of that data and put it on a common ledger that can be shared with, with regulators um, and it can be pulled up anytime because it's on a mutable ledger mm -hmm. as well as its timestamp, so you know when it happened. Mm -hmm. So it's verifiable and uh, it's open to the public. And I think this will be a game changer for a lot of uh, gaming operators um, as they mature because it's inviting, they're getting, it's inviting the regulators onto or into their world, but at the same time it's getting ahead of some of the regulation that will come. So we see a lot of interest in that area. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I know, Cal, you also have a lot of excitement surrounding the capabilities of micropayments and the the possibilities that we have in, in the gambling space and even in the sports betting space to be able to utilize these unique capabilities, especially with the BSB blockchain, with the low fees. What are some of the ideas that you have in this space? Yeah, so that, to me, micropayments is a game changer. There's so many applications that are coming online because Again, the minute you can start transacting with one cent or one cent or two cents or five cents um, because your transaction fees are so low, it's a game changer. So we're seeing we're seeing companies on our ecosystem right now that are coming up with these play to earn games where you can compete in a tournament for 16 cents or five cents and you can have your digital wallet embedded in the game and you can pull that money out and go somewhere else if you want. That 16 cents is yours and you're not gonna have a huge transaction fee or processing fee uh, that essentially, essentially takes it down to zero. So we're seeing games like that. Um, we're seeing these casino games, online casino games where you can bet with one cent and um, it allows more engagement. People get involved with very little money. Uh, so that's a really kind of interesting uh, use case and what micropayments does for, for a lot of these companies. But also what excites me is on the sports side or the betting sports betting side is imagine now, you're, well, we're starting to see a lot of movement into uh, in-game betting and reality betting, if you will, all right, micro betting. And imagine now you can start betting a penny here or there you know, on which way Tom Brady's gonna look before he throws a football. And then you can see it in real time, your wallet. You see that one penny, two penny, three penny. Now a lot of technologies have to come together, AI, and, and there's a, a latency. You have to look at the, you know, that side of it. But you combine that and you fuse that with micro transaction or micro payment blockchain, and it just opens up a world of goodness. So that excites me as well. So the other area too is maybe affiliate marketing. So if you imagine with affiliate marketing, you know, you refer a customer over to the gaming company and these affiliate marketers will want to know what happens to that customer. So imagine you can track the history of that customer and you'll know when they play and it's tracked on a mutable blockchain. But at the same time, through smart contracts and microtransactions or micropayments, every time that player plays, the person that referred them gets a penny and it goes right automatically into re in real time into their wallet. So it opens up a number of use cases. I'm pretty excited about the space. And that's just in the gaming side. Totally, I love that. I think microtransactions really aren't discussed that much just yet because a lot of the blockchains, they can't, they can't do it. <laughs> so this is why BSV is a really exciting space. I think this is a whole world right here. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, another super hot area is NFTs. Uh, everyone, I'm sure, <laughs> has heard of this. And uh, in the esports world, there's there's quite a few use cases for them already. But I know that you actually, or Tal, actually works with fixed gaming or particular uh, crypto fights. Uh, can you describe how that relationship works? And the reason why I bring up crypto fights is that they use NFTs. Characters are NFTs. Their weapons are NFTs. So that's that's the relationship there. But how do you work with this company? In yes. So crypto fights is a very interesting use case because it's a play to earn model. And they, uh, this group, it, essentially it's a fantasy game and a uh, player goes in and they compete against other players and they compete to win NFTs and weapons, as you mentioned. Um, and then you can take these NFTs and you can trade them, right? And um, what's interesting about crypto fights is that they came from another blockchain. They came from Ethereum and they're running into a lot of scalability issues. They were running into cost issues and some tooling issues. And they started to explore different options and they actually went to a second layer uh, blockchain, right? And 
they apparently that that uh, platform went out of business, so they had to remove and restart everything again, and they ended up coming to uh, Bitcoin SV. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because again, you can scale in on mass. You have a, a huge amount of transaction throughput, and your cost of transactions are so low. So the minute you can do that, it opens up again more use cases. But for them, it makes sense because not only are they using uh, BSV as a payment. Uh, network, they're using it as a data ledger. So every single move that their players do online is tracked on the blockchain. So it could be audited, they can look for cheating, a uh, number of really neat uh, things. So I'm excited about that. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that happen in the near future. Amazing. And you're processing all of their transactions. Intel is yeah. processing all those transactions. So it's it's really neat. And then they got up to a point where they're doing a million plus a day. Yeah. That's huge. <laughs> um, and now imagine when you have all these other games coming on. And, and as they grow, we're going to see billions and billions of transactions. So Tal is in a very good position as an infrastructure company process those transactions. Amazing. And at the risk of maybe getting a little bit technical for our audience, but I'll ask it anyway. Sure. When we speak about layer one, layer two, three, four, because I know that a lot of the companies that have potentially looked at Ethereum, that oh, there's layer two and it solves this problem and that problem and layer three, four, how, whoever, <laughs> how many layers, we don't know. Why, in your opinion, does it make more sense to focus on a blockchain where you can do everything on layer one, such as BSV? Right. Yeah, it's an it's an interesting uh, thing. I was in uh, at a conference in Portugal, uh, and there was a Web Summit conference, and brought thousands of people together. And there it wasn't just on blockchain; it was on a number of different technologies. Uh, Facebook or Meta, as they call them now, they were there, <laughs> right? And they were talking about some really interesting uh, concepts. But I. I bring that up because I got to meet a lot of gaming companies mm -hmm. and gaming companies that were exploring blockchains. So like play to earn games. Um, these were uh, some again, casinos, online casinos, and they're looking at blockchain. Um, and really what was interesting about when we started talking to, to a lot of these developers or the, the, the owners of these, these applications, they, when I asked them about their, what blockchain they were using, a lot of them were using layer two solutions. So they were using uh, these layer two solutions that were based off, let's say, a blockchain like Ethereum, but because they ran into costing and, and they ran into uh, scaling issues, they had to find a solution. So they quickly found these layer two solutions that try to solve the scaling and the cost issues. And they quickly build on these, but the issue that they said that they were having is sometimes that it just added some more complexity and more red tape to what they had to do. So, um, and again, crypto fights might be a good example. The reason they came to Bitcoin SV is because they said, well, why would we go ahead and build all this complexity and do all this extra tooling with two layers um, when we can do it on one layer? And that's where actually the Bitcoin SV blockchain, again, I think that really is in a really good position to take on gaming and all these companies because you can do it all on layer one and you get the benefits of, again, having low cost, uh, scalability, you have a stable protocol and it's secure. But there's one more thing to add to that um, is that it has all these tools that you can do in other blockchains. So you can do NFTs, so you can do tokens, smart contracts, again, micropayments. So again, it, it, it's for us out now, my job is to go and educate people on this blockchain because there are some really good things happening there. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And I know Adam Kling of, of Fixed Gaming also talks about the fact that their NFTs are on-chain. Mm -hmm. So they're not in a cloud. They're not in a server somewhere where they could go offline, you know, potentially in, in five years or whatever. So I just Correct. wanted you to, to finish off by explaining why, in your mind, you think that having NFTs on-chain on and with the blockchain like BSV where it's affordable and it, it, the protocol is not going to change, is a, is a better way yeah. to do things. Yeah, I think it's it's for the you know the same reasons as uh, well. Let me, but I'll put it this way. So we have an NFT platform that Tal has put out. And it's called the Staz Protocol, and it's a, we call it a Layer One uh, protocol. And the reason is because it's actually built off the uh, token itself. So it's built off a Satoshi, and you lock up a Satoshi, and you create this logic in it, and it becomes a token. And that token can be an NFT. It can be a reward, it could be anything, um, you name it. But the nice thing is, because it's based on that sec on that first layer, it has all the attributes of that blockchain. So it can scale, it's low cost. Um, there's no third party that's sitting there and governing it. And if they go out of business, 
right? And that all that logic disappears, right? Um, or it can get hacked. And, and again, you're relying on a, a third party. But if you could do it all on chain, your data, those tokens, they're always going to be there. So if that company that's helping you build this token um, disappears, guess what? You can go and retrieve uh, those tokens. So there's a lot of really good things happening when you do things on a layer one uh, blockchain. And I think, again, BSV is in a really good position. Uh, you know, I I always I joke, and I say this in the panels, I sound like a sales guy, I keep saying BSV, but I actually really believe in this. And I'm, I'm super excited because I the, the, the use cases speak for themselves. We see so much growth right now. And uh, gaming, iGaming, a massive area. Amazing. I love it. I hope it didn't get too technical for you guys there, but uh, this was great, Cal. I really appreciate your time. Love having you at these events. It's yeah. so great to see you. And keep up the awesome work. Keep uh, doing the circuit here. I Good. think uh, the education is what exactly what we need. Well, thank you. And thanks for having me and inviting me to these uh, panels and making me get out there and, and, and talk to the world. So uh, <laughs> it's been a great time. Thank you so much. Love it. Love it. And thank you guys so much for watching Hashing It Out. This is Becky Legiro for CoinGeek.com. Thank <laughs> you.